So what exactly is the Fujifilm crop factor when it comes to shooting video? That's an important question, and today's Friday, so you know what that means. Hi everyone and welcome to Palda Tech. Today we're talking about the crop factor on Fujifilm X series of cameras. Now everything we're discussing today is not to be confused with the full frame versus APS-C sensor crop factor. That's a whole other issue and nothing to do with what I'm talking about in today's video. Now when talking about your camera cropping in video, that can be quite confusing because a lot of people believe that lens focal length plays a part in this. It doesn't. For example, this is a 56 millimeter f1.2 and that never changes. It's always a 56 millimeter focal length regardless of whatever cropping or crop factor is being applied. And the same holds true with third party lenses as well. For example, this Viltrox 33 millimeter lens always captures a 33 millimeter focal length regardless of what crop is being applied by the camera. So we know that the lens itself is not changing its focal length. That part is fixed. Rather, the camera itself is slightly zooming into the scene. For example, here's a 23 millimeter shot with no crop factor. You get the full 23 millimeter frame as it was sent to the sensor. But here's the same 23 millimeter lens shot with a crop factor of 1.1 times. It's just zoomed in a bit to that 23 millimeter focal length. Here's the same scene, but with a 1.18 crop factor. And here's a 1.29 crop factor. So clearly the crop factor can affect the framing and the overall look of your shots. So when and why does this cropping occur? Well, a few settings on your camera can set it off. The first is if you switch your video mode into 4K and shoot at 60 frames per second. If you do this, the camera is going to crop in by a factor of 1.18 times. However, you can shoot in 1080 HD at 60 frames per second and no crop factor will be applied. It's the 4K plus the 60 frames per second that causes the camera to apply the 1.18 times crop. And why does your camera apply the crop when shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second? Simple. 4K at 60 frames per second requires more processing power out of the camera because it's got to shuffle around more pixels quickly. Now the next way that a crop could be activated is if you turn on digital image stabilization. This option is on newer Fujifilm cameras such as the X-T4. Now don't confuse this with IBIS. If you have the camera in regular IBIS or if you have the lens OIS set to on, then that will not cause the crop factor to kick in. Rather, it's when you apply digital image stabilization that causes the crop. For example, shooting at 4K at 24 frames per second with no crop, but then if I apply digital image stabilization, I get a crop factor of 1.1 times. Also note that these don't necessarily equally add up numerically. For example, shooting with digital image stabilization turned on gives you a crop factor of 1.1 times, and shooting at 4K 60 frames per second gives you a crop factor of 1.1 8 times. However, if you set your camera to both shoot at 4K 60 frames per second and apply digital image stabilization to that, your total crop factor will be 1.29. Now, part of this has to do with how digital image stabilization on the camera works. And that's because in order for digital image stabilization to stabilize the image, it needs some room to move around the frame to correct any camera shake. So for example, if you've got shaky hands and you're moving the whole frame around like this, your camera will use that cropped in bit to sort of have that wiggle room to move around and counteract the shake of the camera. Lastly, you're going to get a crop factor if you set your camera to high speed recording. It doesn't matter whether it's 240 frames per second or 120. The crop factor will always be 1.29 times. Also, if you're in high speed record mode, it won't matter at all if you have digital image stabilization turned on or not. It is always going to be a 1.29 times crop. Now, some of the newer models of the X-Series cameras, like the X-T4, allow you to use a setting called Fix Movie Crop Magnification. If you set this to on, your camera will apply a 1.29 crop factor, the largest crop factor on the camera, to all footage you shoot, regardless of your frame rate or your other settings. The idea behind this is to make it easier to edit or to match shots in post-production. Personally, I never use this setting, but you may find it useful, and I wanted you to know that it exists. 
tests. And finally, we come to the GFX series of cameras. How exactly do those larger medium format sensors handle cropping? Well, since they're so much larger to begin with, the entire sensor is capturing the video that you're shooting on the camera. Then the recorded footage is downsampled from the original capture into a DCI 4K 4096 by 2160 or UHD 3840 by 2160 output. You definitely get what you pay for because this will give you better detail, better noise performance, better tones, and better colors. Ah, oh, I love that GFX camera. That one is on my bucket list for sure. Now, before we continue, we've got some important business to take care of. Well, we've got a brand new Gear Iguana Hall of Fame member today. I'd like to give a big warm welcome to Ken yeah! Nielsen. Ken, thank you so much for helping to support the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps so much keep things running around here. Ken, let's get your name on the studio wall. Well, Ken, there it is right on the studio wall, just a little bit out of frame, but it's there. And for the rest of you, if you're not aware yet of Pal to Tech Backstage, what are you waiting for? Pal to Tech Backstage is where I share everything behind the scenes of creating the videos for this channel. We have so much fun over there. We kick off the week every Monday morning with coffee time. We've got a private Discord community of photographers, filmmakers, Fujifilm camera lovers. Come check us out at paldetect.com slash backstage. Stage. And now, back to the show. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found the video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I'm going to be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you in a new video next week. Take care.